morning. I'm Leonard Castillo with the Land Union Elementary School District. Uh, and I'll be going over the pre-trip that we do with CHP. So lo let's go ahead and go inside the bus and then we'll go over what CHP tells us before you get started on your pre-trip. Uh, we're gonna be inside before we start our pre-trip. You're gonna give the CHP your license, your special certificate, and you're gonna fill out a form. And on that form, it's gonna ask a couple of questions if the bus is uh, a convention or transit. Our buses are transit. It's a type one bus. And it's also going to ask on that question if this is a two-speed axle. And the answer to that is no. So CHP is going to tell you. You're going to let him know if everything's on or off, high or low. If he can't hear you, he can't check it off. And he's going to ask you to do what's required of you and do it safely. You're going to be inside. And then he's going to tell you your time starts now. So we'll get started. <clears throat> So I'm going to do my initial walk around. So I'll come to the left side of the bus and I'm going to check my left side of the bus, making sure there's no damage and there's nothing out of the ordinary. I'm going to come to the front of the bus, making sure my bus is sitting level. Come to the right side of my bus, making sure there's no, no damage or nothing out of the ordinary. Come to my door, making sure the sill is intact and there's no damage. My glass is clean and free of cracks. Also checking my door to make sure that it opens freely. And on my steps, I'm going to check to make sure watch your step is labeled properly. There is no loose screws and no trip hazards. My handrails are secure. Stop sign is legible on both sides and there's no damage. Checking my modesty panel, making sure it's secure. Okay, my head bumper is secure. Also, I'm going to check my emergency release. This switch can be used in case of an emergency, so we'll hit it to open and we'll show the CHP officer that this is working properly. <clears throat> Next, I'll go to my documentation, making sure that my registration and insurance is current, making sure that my VIN number and my license plate number match the CHP 292 and the VIN number also matches my bus plate. This is a 2017 Bluebird owned by the Land Union School District. It's a 78 passenger bus, which makes it a type one bus. The CHP 292 inspection and approval certificate is inspected every 13 months. Last inspected was June 8, 2020. Next inspection will be 7, 8 of 2021. So next I'm gonna to go to my emergency equipment. Since this is a type one bus, I am required to have a 24 unit first aid kit. I'm going to be checking my sill to make sure that there's no damage and it keeps dust and moisture out. So this is a, 20, uh, a type 1 bus. We're required to have a 24 unit first aid kit. So I'm going to go down the list and start reading. I have two 1 inch adhesive compress, two 2 inch bandage compress. I have two 3 inch bandage compress two four inch bandage compress, one eye dressing, one plain gauze, three by three, two gauze roller bandages, two inch by six yards. I have two, four plain absorbent gauze, half square yard, one, two, three, four. I have three plain absorbent gauze, 24 by 72, four triangular bandages, one, two, three, four, and one scissors and tweezers, and we have all 24 units and they're sealed. Next, I will be checking my fire extinguisher, making sure that it is secured to the bus. Secured to the bus. Next, I'll be checking for any damage to the canister, making sure there's no damage to the canister. My hose is intact, it's secured to the extinguisher and it's not blocked. There's no damage to my handle, my pin and seal is intact. It is fully charged in the green. It is static tested once a year by the state fire marshal. Last tested on July 23rd, 2020. Okay, this uh, fire extinguisher should be, is rated for three types of fire and it should be rated no less than 8 BC. And this fire extinguisher is rated 40 BC. And in case of a fire, we use the pass method. Pull, aim, squeeze and sweep at the base of the fire. Thank you. 
Next I'll be checking my roadside reflectors. I check a different one every day and I should have three. So what I'm checking for is making sure there's no damage to the reflective part of it and there is no sand leaking. And this is how I set it up in case I need to use it. Since I'm done with all my emergency equipment, I'm done with this zone here. I'm gonna move on to my inside flat, making sure that's secure, making sure my fans are secure, my visor is secure, checking my seat, making sure it's secure. There's no loose screws. My bracket's secured to the floor. Next, I'm gonna check my seat belt, making sure it pulls out freely. There's no frays or damage. Also making sure that my seat belt locks in place and it also unlocks. Since this is a type one bus, the seat should go up and down, forward and backward and lock in place. I'm gonna go ahead and start my bus. Making sure all my dummy lights are off. Okay, I'm gonna start on this side panel here. Mentioning everything, making sure everything's on or off, high or low. So I have my switch for my AC, high, low, and off. And I'm gonna leave it on low because I have my blower fan, high, medium, low, and off. Turn that off. So I'm gonna start with my interior lighting, switch for my front lights. On, off, switch for my rear lights. On, off. Switch for the driver dome. On, off. I have my switch for my strobe light and my indicator showing that the strobe light is on. And I'm gonna leave this switch on because that's gonna be part of my first walk around. So I also have my switch for my noise suppressant and that works properly. Then I have my switches for my fan and which I, what I do, I'll hit both of them at the same time. Hi low and off. I have my switch for my headlights. So that's for my parking lights and my headlight. Okay, I have my switch for my high idle. And the way I check that, it's tachometer is rising, so that's working properly. I have my switch for my brake retarder, that's on and off. I have my dimmer switch, which is working properly because you can tell it's dimming the lights on the dash. And I have my switch for my mirror defroster, on and off. I have my knobs for my mirror adjustments. My left flat and my right flat are adjusted to see one inch of the bus, 200 feet to the rear, and my rear tires touching the ground. My cross view mirrors are adjusted to see the front of the bus and the sides of the bus, which are immediate danger zones. My inside overhead flat is adjusted to see all the emergency exits and all the students sitting behind me. So now I'm gonna work my way this way and I'm gonna mention this turn signal lever. Left indicator showing it's working properly. Right turn signal indicator showing it's working properly. Have my high beam indicator working properly. Have my four way flashers indicator showing they are working properly. I have my wipers and washer fluid working properly. I have my air horn working properly, electric horn working properly, my steering wheel tilts and it locks in place. Now I'm gonna go on my cluster here. I have my speedometer. My speedometer reads in increments of five, every line is five miles an hour. I have my engine coolant temperature gauge. I have my fuel gauge, it's at half. I have my tachometer, which reads in increments of 1000 RPMs and it's about 800 RPMs right now. I have my gauges for my dual air brake system and they're at 120 PSI right now. I have my oil pressure gauge. The way I check that, I throttle, throttle up the bus. If the needle rises, my oil pressure gauge is working properly. I have my digital gauge here and it's showing 14 volts, six amps. It's showing that the transmission temperature is at 140 degrees. Uh, showing idle time and the depth level is at 43% and it's also showing the time. So also I have my service brake, my throttle, ignition, I have my parking brake, 
and I have my gear selector, reverse neutral drive, and it's in neutral right now. I can shift up or down five gears. I have my switches for my heater pump. That's on, and I have my switch for the driver heater, high, low, and off. I have the switch for the heater in the rear, high, I can hear it, low, and off. And I'm turning my heater pump switch off. I have my switch for my service door, and it is working properly. Also, the step well lights are working properly. I have my switches for my eight light system. This is my master switch. This is a switch for my ambers. Amber indicator showing that it's working properly. I have my switch for my reds. Red indicator showing that it's working properly, and that's off. I have my AM FM radio. I have my defroster, and it has three levels, high, medium, low, and off. And I'm gonna leave it on medium so I can check it right now. I have my temperature control knob, hot and, hot and cold. Uh, knob for the driver's defroster and knob for vents inside and outside. I have my two-way radio working properly. Next I'm going to get up and check to make sure my defroster is working properly that the vents aren't blocked and they are working properly and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'm going to start my initial walk around on the inside. Okay I'm going to go ahead and start my interior walkthrough. I'm going to look for any loose screws any loose rivets, any loose light covers, any loose speaker covers. I'm going to check my seat backs. I'm going to check all windows and all seat belts every day on my pre-trip. Check a seat belt on this side. That locks in place. It's working properly. I'm going to check a window on this side. It works properly. Check a seat belt on this side. Locks in place. It works properly. Check the window on this side and that works properly. I have an emergency exit properly labeled with instructions on how to use it. I have an audible and it should be visible in the front dash and it's visible. Checking my seat backs. I have emergency exits, both properly labeled with instructions on how to use them. Making sure I open up my emergency exits all the way. It's audible, and I'm gonna check that it's visible in the front. Visible in the front. Emergency exit, properly labeled with instructions on how to use it. Making sure that it's open all the way. It's audible. Run to the front, making sure it's visible in the front. Visible in the front. Come back and close my emergency exit. Head bumper is secure. Door bumper is secure. It's audible. I'm gonna to go to the front, making sure it's visible in the front. And it's visible in the front. And we also gotta make sure that the seat pivots up, just in case we need to use this in case of an emergency, that it keeps the aisle clear. Continue checking my backs. I have another emergency exit properly labeled with instructions on how to use it. It's audible. Going to the front, make sure it's visible. Visible in the front. have an emergency exit do not block labeled properly my head bumper is secure it's audible I'm gonna go to the front make sure it's visible it 
and visible in the front. Okay, on the way forward, I'll be checking for any loose screws, making sure my brackets are secured to the floor, looking for any trash, graffiti, or any tripping hazards or damage to my seats. Next, I'm gonna set up for my first walk around. Activate my left turn signal my ambers and my strobe light. I'm going to grab my tire buddy. And when I step out to this side, I'm going to start at the top. So I'm going to mention my, my clearance lights are working properly. As far as I can see, my glass is clean and free of cracks. Also, I'm going to mention my gas cap, making sure that it's secure and then it's there. And also, I check for any leaks while I'm fueling. Next, I'll check my wheel well cover, making sure that's secure. <clears throat> I'll put my hand here to check for the tread depth. Tread depth minimum in the front should be no less than 430 seconds in all major grooves. Also, check it for proper inflation. Also, checking the outside of the tire, making sure there's no cracks, bubbles, rips, or tears. Checking for any loose lug nuts. Indication of a loose lug nut would be cracks or rust. There's no cracks or rust. No cracks or dents or illegal welds in my wheel. Valve stem secure. My mud flap is secure. I have a visual on my leaf springs, the front and rear. Also checking for any foreign objects in my tire. Also, bus one labeled properly, route one visible. My reflector is intact. Entry light is working properly. Next, I'll come to the front of the bus, making sure that my mirror brackets are secure. My mirrors are clean and free of cracks. Come to the front, start at the top. Clearance lights are working properly. My ambers are working properly. They're the proper color. My glass is clean and free of cracks. Checking sure, making sure my wiper is secure. My blades are intact. Wiper is secure. Blade is intact. My headlights are working properly. My left turn signal is working properly. And it's flashing simultaneously on the left side. My bumper is secure. License plate is secure. Checking the mirror brackets, making sure they're secure. My mirror is clean and free of cracks. Mirror brackets secure, mirrors are clean and free of cracks. And when I come to this side, I'm gonna start from the top, making sure all my clearance lights are working properly. And as far as I can see, my glass is clean and free of cracks. My reflector is intact, panel is secure. Bus one labeled properly. Side mount signal is, there's no damage and it's working properly. Wheel well cover is secure. Checking for proper inflation. Tread depth minimum in the front should be no less than 430 seconds in all major grooves. There's no cracks or bubbles, rips or tears in my tire. Checking for loose lug nuts. Indication of a loose lug nut would be cracks or rust. There's no cracks or rust, no cracks or dents or illegal welds in my wheel. My valve stem is secure. And my mud flap is secure. I have a visual on my leaf springs front and back, and I'm also checking for foreign objects in my tire. Panel is secure. My panel is secure, panel is secure, reflector is intact. Emergency exits, Delano Union School District, CA number all labeled properly. My arrow is going up, so I'm gonna lift my handle up, making sure my door is working properly, that it locks in place, and my seal is intact. Checking my wheel well cover, making sure that's secure. Checking for proper inflation. Tread depth minimum in the rear should be no less than 230 seconds in all major grooves. There's no cracks or bubbles, rips or tears in my tire. Checking for loose lug nut. Indication of a loose lug nut would be cracks or rust. There's no cracks or rust, no cracks or dents or illegal welds in my wheel. My valve stem is secure. My mud flap is secure. I have a visual on my drive shaft guard and I have a visual on my leaf springs front and back. Next, I'll be checking for any foreign objects in my tire and in between my tires. My stop arm is secure. My panel is secure. My reflector is intact. Next, I'm gonna stand back over here. Check my strobe light. Making sure my strobe light is working properly. Next, I'm gonna to come to the rear. 
And when I come to the rear, I'm gonna start at the top, making sure my clearance lights are working properly, my ambers are working properly, there's a proper color, school bus, emergency exit, stop and red lights flash, bus one, labeled properly. My glass is clean and free of cracks, arrows going up, lift my handle, make sure my door is working and the seal is intact. My left turn signal is working properly. My tail lights are working properly. My license plate's illuminated. License plate's secure. My reflectors are intact. Bumper is secure. Muffler is flush with the bumper. And there is no visible leaks. My reflector is intact. Panel is secure. Battery door is secure. Wheel well cover is secure. Checking for proper inflation. Tread depth minimum in the rear should be no less than 230 seconds in all major grooves. There's no cracks or bubbles, rips or tears in my tire. I'm checking for loose lug nut. Indication of a loose lug nut would be cracks or rust. There's no cracks or rust, no cracks or dents or illegal welds in my wheel. Valve stem secure. My mud flap is secure. I have a visual on my leaf springs, front and back, and I'm checking for foreign objects in my tires and in between my tires. This compartment is for the deaf fluid. Only mechanics have access to that. I have my emergency exit, Deleon Union School District, CA number, all labeled properly. Panels are secure, and my reflector is intact. Next, I'm going to set up for my second walk around. So, on my second walk around, I'm going to cancel my strobe, activate my right turn signal activate my reds and my brake lights. So I'm gonna step out to the front of my bus, making sure my reds are activated and they're the proper color. My right turn signal is working properly with the right side. My high beams are working properly. My arm is deployed. My lights are working properly on the front and on the back. Also my stop sign is legible and secure to the bus. I'm going to step to the back making sure my reds are activated and they are the proper color. My brake lights are working properly. My right turn signal is working properly. Next, I'm gonna set up for my third walk around. So I'm gonna cancel my right turn signal, cancel my reds, and I'm gonna activate my four-way flashers and my reverse signal. So I'm going to check my flashers. Front flashers are working properly. I have my reverse lights working properly. My four-way flashes are working properly and they're flashing simultaneously with the left side and they are flashing simultaneously with the right side. Next, I'll be doing my air brake test. Okay, next I'll be doing my air brake test. First test I'll be doing is my cut-in. Cut-in should be no less than 85 PSI. The way I check that, I'll be pressing my service brake to make sure that it cuts in at no less than 85. The way I check that, I'll press my service brake and watch for my needles to rise. Press my service brake and release and count to myself. 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000, 5-1000, 6-1000, 7-1000, 8-1000, 9-1000, 10-1000, 11-1000, 12-1000, 13-1000, 14-1000, 15-1000, 16-1000, 17-1000, 18-1000, 19-1000, 20-1000, 21-1000, 22-1000, 23-1000, 24-1000, 25-1000, 26-1000, 27-1000, 28-1000, 29-1000, 30-1000, 31-1000, 32-1000, 33-1000, 34-1000, 35-1000, 36-1000, 37-1000, 38-1000, 39-1000, 40-1000, 41-1000, 42-1000, 43-1000, 44-1000, 45-1000, 46-1000, 47-1000, 48-1000, 49-1000, 50-1000, 51-1000, 52-1000, 53-1000, 54-1000, 55-1000, 56-1000, 57-1000, 58-1000, 59-1000, 60-1000, 61-1000, 62-1000, 63-1000, 64-1000, 65-1000, 66-1000, 67-1000, 68-1000, 69-1000, 70-1000, 71-1000, 72-1000, 73-1000, 74-1000, 75-1000, 76-1000, 77-1000, 78-1000, 79-1000, 80-1000, 81-1000, 82-1000, 83-1000, 84-1000, 85-1000, 86-1000, 87-1000, 88-1000, 89-1000, 90-1000, 91-1000, 92-1000, 93-1000, 94-1000, 95-1000, 96-1000, 97-1000, 98-1000, 99-1000, 2000-1000, 2001-1000, 2002-1000, 2003-1000, 2004-1000, 2005-1000, 2006-1000, 2007-1000, 2008-1000, 2009-1000, 2010-1000, 2011-1000, 2012-1000, 2013-1000, 2014-1000, 2015-1000, 2016-1000, 2017-1000, 2018-1000, 2019-1000, 2020-1000, 2021-1000, 2022-1000, 2023-1000, 2024-1000, 2025-1000, 2026-1000, 2027-1000, 2028-1000, 2029-1000, 2030-1000, 2031-1000, 2032-1000, 2033-1000, 2034-1000, 2035-1000, 2036-1000, 2037-1000, 2038-1000, 2039-1000, 2040-1000, 2041-1000, 2042-1000, 2043-1000, 2044-1000, 2045-1000, 2046-1000, 2047-1000, 2048-1000, 2049-1000, 2050-1000, 2051-1000, 2052-1000, 2053-1000, 2054-1000, 2055-1000, 2056-1000, 2057-1000, 2058-1000, 2059-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060-1000, 2060
Okay, that was my cut in, that was my quick release valve, so my cutout was at 120. So next, I'm gonna do my static test. I'm gonna turn off my engine and turn on the key since it's a digital system. And on this test, I'm not allowed to lose no more than two PSI per minute. Any movement of my needles will indicate air loss. If there was air loss, it would be coming from the treadle valve or the service brake valve lined to the tank and any loose fittings in those components in that area. So I'm going to time myself for one minute because that's what CHP requires. Okay, a minute has passed. Next, I'm going to do my apply test by applying my service brake and releasing my parking brake. And on this test, I'm not allowed to lose no more than three PSI per minute. Any movement of my needles will indicate air loss. If there was air loss, it would be coming from my service brake valve, parking brake valve, lines to my tanks, lines to my brake pods, and lines to my spring brake chambers, and any loose fittings in those components in those area. So I'm gonna tell myself for one minute again. Okay, minute has passed. Okay, so next I'm gonna go outside and split my system. I'm gonna go ahead and drain my front tank, and I'm gonna come back in and look for my low air warning to device to come on before 60 PSI. So I'm going to go ahead and drain my front tank, which is this valve here. Okay, next what I'm checking for is a low air warning device should come on before 60 PSI and stay on at any pressures below that. Okay, my low air warning device came on before 60 PSI and it should stay on at any pressures below that. And at the same time, I'll be watching my rear gauge, making sure that needle is holding and then it's not moving. And it's holding, it's not moving, so that's a good indication that our two-way check valve is working properly. I'm going to continue draining my front tank all the way to zero, go outside, close the valve, come back in and perform one stop. So I'm going to step outside and go close the valve. I'm going to go ahead and start my bus. Make sure at any time you're moving the bus that your seat belt is on. Put my bus in gear, release my parking brake, and let my bus roll forward and apply my service brake. Okay, my bus stops. Next, I'm going to secure my bus and recharge my system to 100 PSI or a little bit over. Okay, so it's charged, I recharged the system to a little over 100 PSI. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is turn my engine off and turn my key back on and I'm gonna drain my rear tank.
So I'm going to come back in and watch for my low air warning device to come on before 60 PSI. Okay, my low air warning device came on before 60 PSI and it should stay on at any pressures below that. And as I'm draining the rear tank, I'm watching my front gauge here, making sure that it's not moving and it's holding. And it's not moving and it's holding. That's a good indication that my two-way check valve is working properly. I'm going to continue draining my rear tank all the way to zero. Once it gets to zero, I'm going to go outside, close the valve, come back in and perform another stop. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my bus, making sure my seabout is on. I'm going to put my bus in gear and release my parking brake and let my bus roll forward and apply my service brake. Okay, and my bus stops. Next, I'm going to recharge the system to 100 PSR, a little bit over 100 PSI. and I'm gonna perform my last three stops. And my last three stops are two with my service brake and one with my parking brake. Okay, I charged my system to a little over 100 PSI. And the first test I'll be looking for is any pull in either direction. So I'm gonna let my bus roll forward with my hands off the steering wheel, checking for any pull in either direction. Any pull in either direction will indicate that the front axle brakes are coming out of adjustment. There is no pull. Put my hands on the steering wheel. I'm gonna apply my service brake once more, listening for any unusual noises. Any unusual noises will also indicate that the front axle brakes are coming out of adjustment. The next test I'll be doing is applying my parking brake, checking for stopping distance, making sure that it's consistent with previous pre-trips. If not, that'd be an indication that my rear axle brakes are coming out of adjustment. The last test I'll be doing, since my parking brake is applied and my bus is in gear, I'm gonna throttle up to about 1100 RPMs to make sure my brake holds and my brake holds and that concludes my pre-trip.